Hi guys, Neil here with Facelift Interiors. Welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we're gonna be upholstering this L-shaped sofa or couch from this into this. So it's an L-shaped sofa, but it's three different parts. So we're gonna be upholstering each part separately, but the same principle applies to anything really, to any sort of sofa. The only thing that's different with this is the back cushions are upholstered on. They don't come off, they're actually tacked on. Something slightly different, so if you have got to do this at home, you can watch how we do the back cushions. We basically take them off, copy them exactly, and then put them back on. It's, it's simple. So if you like upholstery videos and you like getting tips and tricks, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and you'll see every week that we're uploading when a new video comes live. So without further ado, this is how you re-upholster a sofa or couch. Action! So I start by using a claw hammer and taking off the casters. They pop off. Then I rip the old hessian bottom off. Then I use my pincers to snap all the old staples up and take the old fabric off. So there's an old lining fabric on the underneath the outside back as well. Get rid of that. So, strip it down, the webs are really weak. So, that's the first port of call. Tighten the webs, same on the backs. New Hessian seat, foam back on, and we're gonna start holstering. How much tighter I can pull that? Here I'm putting a layer of hessian on top of the old webs that have been tightened. This gives it extra protection and makes the seat stronger. I'm just stapling it along for the edge and then over the edge as well. Make sure the edge has got a secure layer on it as well. And I'm also stapling across the bottom. And then cut the excess off the sides. All right guys, that is the seat. Fully re well, not fully rebuilt, I'll put the foam on still, but, so you see what I've done, I tightened the webs, pulled them nice and tight, stapled them off, cut them off, pulled them tight again at the back. Uh, new Hessian on the top, nice and tight. So that is gonna tighten that seat up, no end. So this foam, you can see, is all knackered, this little half inch bit here, so I am gonna change it. So I'm using an adhesive to glue down the old foam, Make sure it's fully stuck everywhere. Then we've got a half inch that we replaced on the front. And I'm using a straight edge and a sharp knife to cut off a nice straight line so we've got something to follow. Right guys, so what I'm doing now is I'm tightening the back webs up. So if I cut these off, they're really quite loose. I'll pull them up nice and tight. Right, so now we are at this stage. So we've rebuilt the seat, we've tightened all the webs, we've tightened all the back webs, ex except for the two that go across, as they attach to the back cushion. We're gonna put that one on the seat, now we're gonna cut all the fabric. Before they had the fabric, they just cut it long and then they stapled it off here. But what I wanna do is I wanna make this, because the customer has it in three different pieces, this sofa, it's not one big piece. They have it two and then one. So I'm gonna make it totally reversible every way they want. So I'm gonna cut the fabric and I'm gonna put a seam here. And here is where the arm goes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a big bit of fabric here because the arm's gonna go on top of it anyway. So I don't need to mess around putting other bits on. I'm gonna put one big bit here. Here, it's gonna come down to here and the same here. So I'm gonna do a seam here and a seam on the court on both sides and a bit of fabric in the middle. Then so it's gonna have a piped front border. Comes all the way around here, all the way back this side. This side is gonna stop about here because the arm goes on, so it doesn't need to go all the way back. So that's where we're at now. I'm gonna start cutting some fabric, so come with me now. What I'm gonna show you now is what I'm doing with the seat. So I'm doing a nice seam on the top of the seat. So let's cut our seat. So our seat is only eight inches because it doesn't need to come all the way down. It's there from a separate border on the front. That is eight inches. I need to cut it 52 and a half to, cut to finish 51 and a half. 52 and a half. We'll mark it at the bottom as well. 
So now I'm going to mark six inches on here, and then I'm going to mark six inches down this way. I'm going to do the same the other side. So I'm drawing a line across here to join these two marks up. So I've gone six inches from that point, six inches from this point, mark. So now I'm just going to cut up to the mark and then curve. It's going to sit. This bit's the bit that comes down and we staple off down here. This bit sits on top of the seat. And you'll understand why once I've sewn it all up. All right, guys, so we took six inches out here and six inches out here, so we have that. So these two will sew together, and they'll sew down there, and it'll sit nicely on this corner here. We also sew a strap of webbing underneath here to lash the seat in, because we always lash our seats in. That is that. What we're going to do here is we're going to put some Dacron, then we're going to start fixing our seat on. Right, so what I've done now is I've shot the webbing off. So what we're doing is now we are lashing up and down. So obviously we're coming up from the bottom. I'll show you the bottom in a minute. So I like to leave an equal space in between each web lash, say. So onto the last one. Now what I'll do is I'll pull all these relatively tight. So what I'm doing is I'm stapling. And you can see here, look at all the webs. Right guys, so what I've done now is I've pushed all the seat on, tucked it all under, and I've made a cut into here, and here, and here. Now I can start stapling off at the back. What I'm doing is I'm fixing off this side. There's an arm that goes here. Now what I'm doing is I'm marking where the piping is gonna go. So guys, what I've done here, as you can see this white line that I've drawn on, that is for, as so I'm doing a piped front border. So we put our piping on, then our fabric, then back tack, then blue foam, then fold it back and have a nice clean front edge. So I'm gonna show you how I do that now. So I'm just gonna go run the piping up and join the border up. When you're doing this, you'll see where you're piping and you'll feel where your piping edge is. So push your back tack up. I always try and staple near the top. Put a few down the bottom as well to hold it down. Because it is cardboard still, so it can bend. So I always try and staple close to the top. So always double check as well what you've done. Make sure there's no staple showing. What we're going to do now is glue this half inch blue foam on. So guys, what I've done is I've stapled along here. So when I pull this down, like so, the fabric doesn't pull down the foam. So I've all glued it and then I've also stapled along here. So when I pull that down nice and tight, there's not going to be a gap. So as you can see down this side, I'm going to be using this stuff. It's a lot thinner because this side, the other sofa is going to butt up to it. And if I use the half inch all the way around, then it's going to push out too much here. And you can put half inch on this side, half inch on the other sofa. It's going to be about an inch where the sofas won't go together because there's too much foam. So I'm going to use a thinner foam here. Another tip, because this fabric's got a line in it, make sure your lines stay straight. Very important. So 
got a stuck cut of staples in there. And I'm going to nip up into there. Same on this side. Then I'm going to use something long and thin push all my fabric through. When you get to this point here, I know that I've got to finish here and here. What I can just do is fold my fabric to where I want it to finish. So I want it to be like that. So I know that if I cut a half inch away from there, like so, when I tuck it under, So I've stripped this fabric off, which is the arm. So I'm just gonna show you what I do with this. I've already taken the fabric off, but before I took the fabric off, see these little purple marks? I made I made marks across here. So I know that has gotta go back like that, where all the purple marks line up. When I sew it back together, so I'm gonna flatten these out so I get a nice template. I've got one on the front, one on the back. So I'm just gonna lay these down, and flatten them out. So use the iron to be a good husband. And obviously, because there's a left arm and a right arm, so you do one that side, flip it over and do one the other side. So, we're going to go one there. One there. One at the top. And two on the sides. Top, and that is the front. So I'm going to flip that over and do the other side. So, and put this arm on. Get my hand in here, push that selvage out. As soon as I knock that selvage out the other way, I can see it sitting better already. Right guys, so on to back cushions. So as you can see here, this is a back cushion. It's got buttons. It's got lots of flyers on it because these are what you use to staple off. So it's a fixed back cushion. Here I'm using the Stanley knife. Take off all the old panels. Make sure you make the marks and copy them exactly. Even your flyers because it will tell you exactly where they need to go. I know that my cushion's in the right position. All I'm doing is stapling along. Now I've got this one as well, so all I'm doing is stapling off the fabrics. So I'm just going to staple off this webbing. We're going to do exactly the same for this one as what we've done for this. So now I'm going to be doing the buttons on this sofa like I have here on this sofa. So cutting enough twine to get through, make sure I've got enough to tie off. So what I'm doing here is I'm finding my old hole, feeling where my old button is, pushing that all the way through till I feel it pop through the back. I'm gonna thread my button on. Like so. I just hold on to them so it doesn't fall back through and just pull it through. Bump. Then we just get an old bit of fabric, so an old bit of leather. Then what we do here is we hold on to both, we loop under, go back through, start tightening up. And as we get towards the end, stick that through there and then pull it nice and tight, Gulliver. Then that bit of fabric there stops the button from popping back through. That's how you put a button on. I'm going to show you now how we put an outside back on a sofa like this. So I've got my fabric here. This is one long bit of fabric. As you can see, it's got two joins in it because the fabric's not wide enough to go all the way around. So we've had to put joins on. So I'm just going to leave that on top. We've also got a lining fabric that I've already cut. So what I'm gonna start by doing is putting a nip in the center of here. Why do we do that, do you say? So we can line up the center of the fabric with the center of the unit, which is here. Ah yeah. We're gonna start by stapling. And I've got a little ridge here, so I can push my gun up into the ridge, pull in nice and tight. You don't want this to be on loose.
nice and tight. We don't want to put too many in, just enough to hold it in place. So now we've done that, we're going to start back tacking. So this is our cardboard strip. So this staples up into here, gives you a nice clean edge. First of all, we're going to put that on. I like to staple quite close to the top. I like to staple nice and close up to the edge of the cardboard because the cardboard isn't rock solid. So if you pull it really tight, which I like to do, I like to pull things really tight, that cardboard will bend. So you want to get as close to the edge as you can. As we come towards the end, I'm going to put one that way. So what you do now is pull this down, see how it's going to sit. So now we're going to do our ply grip. So with ply grip, you want to cut a bit that's long enough. You see it's got a sharp edge there. I'm going to take that off and then here, that will pierce straight through the fabric. So what I'm going to do is, if that is going to focus on there, I'm just going to take the edge off. As you can see, that is no longer sharp. And I just sort of make it round. So I want to go level with my yellow back tack. So I'm just going to change to a longer staple. So that is a 14 mil staple. So that's likely to drive in a bit further. Now that is all on, I'm going to push it about, I know I've done a video on this before, but on this fabric I'm going to be a bit different. I'm going to go about 50%. I like to get my fingers in still, get the fabric to grip on. So that's that side done. Now we're going to go around to the other side. So I'm pulling this really tight guys. You have to be careful here because obviously there's a slope. So the back isn't perfectly straight, so it isn't gonna pull straight. So that's why you need to pull all the tension out of it. Now I'm gonna cut away our excess fabric down here. Using a blade, be very careful. Huh? It's a lot of preparation doing an outside back. So now we're gonna put sticker on. So now we've got our Dacron on. So I'm literally cutting a quarter of an inch away from the metal. I'm gonna do the same on the other side. So now I'm just gonna go around, staple the Dacron down at the top. I don't want it turning when I pull the fabric down. Right, so, woohoo! So pull down nice and tight in the middle. Put a couple in there to start us off. So what I'm going to do is work my way around, just tacking off. And they don't have to be amazing because they can all come out later. As we get to here, what I definitely want to do is try and keep my seam here straight. So what I'm going to do is just have to work my way down. I don't want to push that down too far yet. So what I'm doing here is using my fingers to pull my fabric. So I've got to keep an eye on this seam my fingers around, hook the fabric onto the back of the metal gripper so it sticks. So what I do now is I get my regulator, go down and I mark the fabric really hard because you need to be able to see it. So then as you pop it out, you know where you need to cut. So what I'm doing here is using my regulator to push all the excess fabric in, see if there's anything that I need to cut away. Just a little bit here. Start doing now is pushing that gripper all the way down. If there's any threads, use your regulator to push them in. So now guys, I'm gonna start hammering down. So now I can start stapling off at the back. So I finished off by stapling off the outside back. Then I put a bottom on. We previously done a video before on how to put a bottom on a sofa. So we'll leave that in the link above. So as you can see, here's the finished product. New cushions, new legs, and looking fantastic, fantastic. Thanks for watching guys.